Welcome to my channel. Today we're exploring the intricate workings of high voltage read relays. So stay tuned as we tear one down and we're gonna reveal its secrets. So relays are remarkable devices, often unsung heroes in the realm of electronics, but what makes them so special, especially when dealing with high voltage applications? Let's find out. So at its core, a reed relay consists of a pair of ferromagnetic reed blades, um, these in here, which are hermetically sealed within a tube. Usually it's some sort of glass tube with an inert gas inside of it. And these blades act as the relay's contacts um, at its core. Um, so when the magnetic field is introduced into this winding around these, um, this whole capsule basically of, of sealed gas, um, then these reeds become magnetized and they're drawn together, which closes the circuit, which is shown on the bottom um, figure B. So it's simple yet ingenious. But here's where high voltage relays stand out. They're designed to handle significantly higher voltages than their standard counterparts. And this is achieved through a few different things typically. Um, one is enhanced insulation, so it prevents arcing and insulation breakdown. High voltage reed relays often use specialized materials and thicker glass enclosures. Uh, they also use precision engineering. The alignment and spacing of the reed blades are finely tuned to prevent flashover, a critical factor at high voltages, and robust construction. The relays are built to withstand typically you know, mechanical stresses that come with the high voltage switching. So this, um, this reed relay that we're gonna be breaking down today, um, hopefully tearing it open and seeing what secrets it has inside. Uh, this one is rated for 7,500 um, peak AC volts and about 10 kilovolts DC flowing through it. So it's, it's a pretty beefy one. Um, um, so now uh, let's get our hands on this reed relay as we tear it down. We'll see these concepts hopefully come to life. We'll discover how its design enables it to efficiently and reliably switch high voltage signals, a task that's crucial in many uh, electronic applications. So this one is specifically used in uh, a piece of lab equipment actually. It's uh, um, a mass spectrometer and the mass spectrometer uses um, high voltages basically to send ions down a tube and then at the end there's a detector and the detector also runs on high voltages so um, those ions are accelerated via high voltages and this is like a switching relay and i i did examine the casing a little bit there's a nice seam that follows all the way around the casing so we should just be able to pull this out uh, as long as they didn't glue it in super hard All right, there we go. It's a part. So there's this big rubber casing. It feels like some type of rubber. I'm not sure exactly what it is, um, but that's starting to crack as we're pulling it apart. And let's see if we can just pull this rubber casing away as well. See what's underneath there. Oh, well, I guess we can just tear it off and break it. I'm hoping that if, oh yeah, you can see a little bit of glass poking through there, it's reflective. So making some progress here. Just gotta be careful when using the pliers when we're getting closer to the glass. And we're starting to see sort of the solenoid windings that wrap around the relay, as well as some sort of metal plate that's on top. So we're finally starting to unearth a little bit of this. You can see there's this long glass tube that sticks through this coil pack. The coils are driven by these two leads that come out of the casing. And then the relay contacts, one attaches here and the other one attaches here through the glass tube. So I'd like to actually kind of excavate one of these and 
and pull it out of the, uh, the rubber completely so we can get a better view of the internals and what these things look like. So that kind of worked. Still on a wire attached here. So there's actually interesting, there's actually, so there were these two tiny little wires. If you can see those, one there and one there that attached to those coils. And then between them, looks like a diode. And we're making some progress here. Yep, there we go. Yeah, this is a nice specimen actually. It's turning out pretty nice. So we got most of the rubber off. And what we found is, yeah, this coil of wire is has a lot of turns on it, more turns than I would have thought. So when current flows through all those coils, it creates a magnetic field that brings those two reed switches or uh, reed contacts together inside the glass. So you can kind of see the reeds inside the glass are sort of long and flat. And here's one of the wires that attaches to the coil. Here's the other one. And this is probably magnet wire, so it has some sort of coating on the outside of the wire that keeps it from just shorting all of those turns in there. Yeah, very interesting. And so this one broke. I broke the glass on it when I was taking this whole assembly apart. So let's see if we can actually remove one of the, one of the reeds without getting cut by glass here. Yeah, there's some loose glass here. So there we have it. There's one of the reeds. The contacts that sticks through into the, into that glass housing and pretty simple. Very simple device. Um, for how expensive these are, these devices, I mean, the whole thing, when it's brand new, they'll typically run you over a hundred dollars. Um, and that's for a five kilovolt model. I'm not sure how much a 10 kilovolt model like this one would cost. The website uh, didn't say, they asked, you know, you have to submit a quote. And that typically means, you know, things are getting expensive if they won't just come out and say the price on the website, you have to submit a quote. Um, you know, if you have to request request the price, call for availability or whatnot. But yeah, I'm curious to see if these are permanently magnetic. I guess not. So this, this piece of metal that was in there earlier was magnetic. Um, it was sticking to the, this coil, right? So it has to be steel, but it's not the reeds that are magnetic. Interestingly enough, uh, must be some part of the coil, though this coil is not magnetic at all. So I'm not sure what's inside this one that's magnetic. Maybe we can get this apart a little bit more and, oh wow. Yeah, so this one looks quite different than, than the other. There's two different coils in here. One's sort of long elongated, more of an oval than a circle. I'm curious as to why that is. Let's see if we can get a better look on the intact side. And there's some sort of, oh, there's actually a magnet, a permanent magnet inside the coil. You can see it's reflecting a little bit red there. I don't know why that is either. I would assume to assist with these moving the reeds, but not totally sure. If you know anything about that, definitely feel free to leave a comment below. But yeah, so kind of made a mess, but uh, that's pretty cool. I wasn't sure if I would actually be able to get one of these things out intact, and I did without breaking the glass on this one. So very cool device. And you can even see there's this little knob on the edge of the tube there. 
that's where they filled the gas, uh, the inert gas in there initially when this piece was manufactured. Um, and then they just heated it up and sealed it off once they filled the tube with gas. Well, first they pull vacuum to get, get out any oxygen and air, and then they fill it with uh, typically argon gas. Could also be nitrogen. But yeah, that's about all I have for today. So I hope you learned something. Um, that's all for now. Bye.